Hi there, this is Abigail from abigailscraftshowto.com and today I'd like to show you two different ways of joining yarn together. So if you're changing colours between rounds or if you your old ball of yarn runs out and you need to start a new one. There's a couple of different ways. If you're knitting, the easiest way is actually just to overlap your yarns for a few stitches and then weave in your loose ends afterwards. But if you don't want to weave in afterwards, which I don't like either, <laughs> who does? There's a couple of ways you can join your yarn as you go. And the first one I'd like to show you is called a Russian join. And for this, you will need a yarn needle. The smallest one you can get away with, as a smaller sharpened needle makes this technique a lot easier. And um, we've got a two loose ends and what we're going to do is overlap them and bring them back on each other like this okay then we're going to thread one through the needle if we can splitting the traditional just wet the ends to make it a little easier Okay, so we've threaded our yarn onto the needle. We're going to go back just a few inches and actually push the needle through the centre of the yarn. It helps if you go a little bit further than the length of this yarn tail because then you haven't got a loose end sticking out at the side. But once you've gone all the way through quite a bit, you see that's all on the needle. Okay, we're well just going to pull the yarn back through itself. Which, if you've used a sharp needle, can be a little tough because you've got the yarn actually going between the fibres instead of just straight at the middle. Okay, take the needle off, pull that out. Okay, I didn't go quite far enough there, so I've got a little loose end sticking out, but I can just trim that off. If I pull back a little bit, snip. And there you go, you can't see it. Okay. So we're just going to do the same with the other piece. Thread it onto the needle. And on this side you should start as close to the join as you can on the other side. Can't get my hands to do what I want. Too much coffee today. I've got the shakes a bit. Coffee, or as I call it, blog fuel. <laughs> okay, so this yarn's untwisting itself, which sometimes can make it easier, sometimes it can make it harder. So again, pull the yarn through pull it back and there you are a nice strong join the problem with this join is that of course it's double thickness so if you're joining like this you will have a thick spot in your knitting if you want to avoid a thick spot and you're using wool yarn actually this is a great what great way of joining it's very quick very easy and very strong but it only works on animal fibres. This is a felted join, also known as a spit splice, and you'll see why in a minute. <laughs> For this one, you need to actually break the end of your yarn. So if you've got a blunt end, just pull a little bit off and then tease it out just a little bit so it's slightly thinner. 
that means he won't have as much of a thick spot. If you just untwist it gently, you should be able to tease it a little. Okay, we're going to overlap the ends of our yarn for a few inches. And the next thing to do is to add a little moisture. Now the reason it's called a spit splice is fairly obvious. The moisture easiest to hand is in your mouth. So just lick the palms of your hands like so. And then rub the yarn between your moistened hands until you feel it warm up a bit. If this is making you go, ew, spit, um, then yeah, ordinary plain water works just as fine. So you could just run your hands under the tap to get exactly the same effect. It's just you're not always near a tap. Okay, and that is actually felted together. The fibres have felted and locked to each other. And as you can see very little thickening it's not as thick and almost as strong as the yarn itself it will be a little bit weak but yeah you can pull it apart given enough time given enough effort but yeah so there we go Russian join and spit splice have a great weekend <laughs>